Welcome to this service of Holy Communion for the fifth Sunday after Trinity. But before we start, I thought it would be good to remind people that uh, All Saints Church in Weston is open each Sunday for private prayer um, from 10 a.m. till 12. And the third Sunday of this month, uh, there will be a service of Holy Communion uh, at 1030 but I will remind you of that during the week. One of my dear friends in workshop was saying, well, why are you wearing all these robes and everything? And I thought I'd explain that I'm not wearing a chasuble, I'm wearing a stole, which is a scarf. And as you can see, there's one side is green, the other side is red with the flames for Pentecost. Uh, and I also have a purple one, and on the other side, it's white. And these are, if you like, my badge of office as a priest and as vicar. Uh, but also, they are to remind us of the seasons that we're going through. And Trinity, obviously, because God is creator, uh, is the color green. So hence I'm using the, color, the, the green one with bread and the Lord creating the heavens and the earth, Christ. And although it's partly tradition that we wear these things, it's also uh, as a visual aid for those people who are more visual or colourful or remember things in different ways. I hope that was helpful. So let's just start by lighting our candle. Jesus is the light of the world, and in him there is no darkness at all. So let's just have a moment of quiet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And we say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first hymn today is uh, Rock of Ages, and it is hymn number 582, 582 in our hymn books. Rock of Ages. Rock of ages, work for me, let me hide myself in thee. No. 
So let's prepare with our confession. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second commandment is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. And we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the Collect for the Fifth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Holy Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people that in their vocation and ministry, they may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from Genesis chapter 25, beginning at verse 19. This is the account of Abraham's son, Isaac. Abraham became the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean from Padam Aram, 
and sister of Laban the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife, because she was barren. And the Lord answered his prayer, and his wife, Rebekah, became pregnant. The babies jostled each other within her, and she said, Why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first to come out was red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment. So they called him Esau. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel. So he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth to them. The boys grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was a quiet man staying amongst the tents. Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once, when Jacob was cooking stew, Esau came in from the open country famished. He said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that red stew, I'm famished. That's why he was also called Edom. Jacob replied, first, sell me your birthright. Look, I'm about to die, Esau said. What good is the birthright to me? But Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank, got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his only son in the likeness of sinful man, to be a sin offering. And so he condemns sin in sinful man, in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the sinful nature anymore, but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Holy Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. And if the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if the Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin. Yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second hymn is Come Down, O Love Divine, and is hymn number 89. Hymn number 89. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered round that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell amongst thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seeds fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, thirty times what was sown. Those who have ears, let him hear. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in the heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who receives the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy, but since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution come because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell amongst the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries and cares of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word, understands it, and produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's bow our heads to pray. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and bring glory to you alone. Amen. Here we have three complementary but contrasting stories. The account of Isaac and his wife, Rebecca, and how they pray to the Lord because... Rebecca was at that time barren, and the Lord answered their prayers, but then the babies inside started to kick, and it says they jostled each other within her, and she said, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and it's interesting what the Lord says. He says, there are two nations in your womb. Two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. And it reminds us in Isaiah that the Lord knew us even before we were knit together in the mother's womb, and he knew that he saw the red head, he saw means red, who was the hunter a man of the open country, <clears throat> whilst Jacob was a quiet man, staying at home amongst the tents, that actually the older Esau would serve the younger Jacob. And also it caused a divide between father and mother. Isaac, who had a taste for game, loved Esau. Where his mother prepared her son Jacob. But it also shows the cunning of Jacob. But also perhaps he knew being a more spiritual man rather than a more um, hunter-minded person that Esau didn't regard his birthright with much 
seriousness. And here, he saw probably a very tough man, said he was born, he was covered in hair, just wanted what he wanted. And he came in and he was famished. And Jacob had made a lentil stew and some bread. And the negotiation about the birthright starts. What good is my birthright to me, he said. I'm famished. I'm about to die. So his stomach was more important than the spiritual birthright, which God gives usually to the old, uh, firstborn. It's interesting that the same sort of struggle happened with Cain and Abel. And Abel, who was the one who worked on the land, was found favourable. And not Cain, and Cain murdered his brother. He made that fatal decision and he swore an oath selling his birthright to Jacob for a bowl of lentils. And it says, so Esau despised his birthright. So he didn't deserve it. Then we come to the passage in Romans, which talks about the difference that the blood of Jesus makes and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It brings us out of our sinful nature and sets our feet on solid ground, washed in the blood. And prepared to inherit what God has promised through the terribly costly price of Jesus' blood. And the promise is that because of that blood, we can approach the Heavenly Father. We can receive forgiveness when we truly repent. And our mortal bodies will be transformed through his spirit who lives in us. Both here on earth, where the real characteristics that are built into us before we were even in our mother's womb, can bear much fruit. Which brings us on to the gospel. And it's a, a very regularly shared piece of scripture. And is pertinent to us today because many hear the gospel, think, oh, how great. Oh, I love the band and I love the music and I love all this and get swept along by all the emotion of it. But because they have no roots, because they haven't been discipled, because they haven't been taught, they don't really understand and soon drift away from it and become backslidden. But then there are those who, the cares of the world, money, relationships, sex, position, authority, power, job, get in the way and choke those fragile fronds of the ears of wheat and make it unfruitful. But then it says, the one who receives the seed that fell on good soil is the man who heard the word and understands it. And you understand it by reading it, praying, listening to explanations, asking questions. And then he went on to produce a crop which yielded 160 or 30 times what was sown. It's rather like the, man, the men who were given the talents the one, the five, the five, and the ten. Those men who had the ten and the five went and invested the money and it doubled. Come in and receive your inheritance. But the one who had one thought, oh, the master's uh, reaping where he doesn't sow. He is ruthless. I'll bury it. And he said, here's the one you gave me. And so he took it off him and gave it to the one who had 10. 
And it's the same way when we squander our talents and skills and the things that God has given us, which can be a blessing to others. One day, when we come before the Bema, B-E-M-A, which is the judgment seat of Christ, we will be called to account with what sort of steward we have been with what we were given. And what the implications of us doing something or not doing something has had on other people and the privilege we've had to share what we received. Will the Lord say, well done, good and faithful servant in whom I am well pleased? Or will we argue, well, I said, I did this, I went to church, I did the other and all the rest and the Lord will say, I never knew you. So if you don't understand, read the word, pray, ask the questions, share with other Christians, come to prayer meeting, come to the Bible study, so that your roots may be firm and strong and that you grow in strength and bear much fruit. Amen. Let us pray. And Heavenly Father, we praise you that you sow the seed into our hearts and water it. We pray, Lord, that we will read your word, we will pray and ask the questions and be discipled and bear much fruit to your honour and glory. And that we will not squander what we've been given. We won't allow the world to choke it. And we will endeavour to seek your face. Seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness, and then all this will be added as well, so that we may be the people you desired us and created us to be. We pray for our nation, our queen and the royal family. We pray for our prime minister and government. And we pray, Lord, you forgive us as a nation and as a people, as individuals for our sins. Our sins against each other, but mainly against you. Our sins against people around the world through our heritage and the wrong decisions and po political mistakes. But also those spiritual decisions which have been devastating. We pray you forgive us for the way in which we've treated Israel in the past when we had such a privilege of being called to bless and that you heal our land and deliver us from this pestilence. We also pray today, Lord, for Tony and his partner, Sandra, for Janet C., her husband Glyn and his sister Susan and all the family in their sadness. We pray for Jim in Scotland. Thank you for his progress. Pray for Dave for restoration of his kidneys. Alan for his legs and knees. For Mary B, Chris's mum, Nick and Mary, Terry and Enid, their neighbours who look after them and keep an eye for Liz, for Richard, for Peter and John in Mansfield, for Mark and John in Weston, for Lindsay, for Philip after his hip operation and for Barry. We also pray for Archdeacon Phil who lost sadly his father recently. We also pray for Brian, for Trevor, Morgan and Martina, Jill, Zach. And we pray for ourselves, that by your Holy Spirit, 
you will bring us closer to you and deeper. Give us depth of knowledge and understanding and fill us more with your love day by day. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Our next hymn is I, the Lord of Sea and Sky, number 857, 857.
Now we move to that part of the service where we share communion. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands has made. It would become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, which earth has given and human hands has made, fruit of the vine, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Jesus Christ, you share our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all a perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks. And said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. And as we proclaim his death, and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. And with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray, therefore, with confidence, as our Saviour Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
the body of Christ, keep me in eternal life. The blood of Christ, keep me in eternal life. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we beseech you, that the course of this world may, may be so peaceably ordered by your governance that your church may joyfully serve you in all godly quietness. <coughs> Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Our final hymn is All People That On Earth Do Dwell, number 20. Number 20. Ray Fawn Williams, his version of all people that on earth do dwell.
and the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you, all whom you love, cherish, and pray for this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. So until next time, it's a big God bless you from me, Greg. Bye.